In a professional setting, there's normally three reasons a person or a team member is not doing what you want them to do. And it can really help when you're looking at this to very quickly clarify a problem and actually fix it very quickly as well. Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Norman. I'm the CEO here at MIM. MIM is the professional body for IT Major Instant Management and we deliver our training and certification program in the global best practice in IT Major Instant Management to our clients in over 95 countries around the world. I want to talk about why you are missing the initial comms for major instant management while you're not getting comms out on time. Now, it might be a colleague, it might be one of your team members, or it might be you. But let's have a conversation, hopefully bring some clarity and a new way of thinking about this for you. So, in the global best practice in IT major instant management, the standard for issuing initial comms is 15 minutes. That is when the major instant team accept and receive a handover from the service desk or your inception point, they have 15 minutes to issue initial comms and make stakeholders aware. Now, go back a number of years and the standard across the industry was about 30 minutes. And we've been very fortunate that a lot of the software companies, the technology companies who provide major instant orchestration tools have become far more sophisticated, they are better integrated, they can pull in more information which makes our job a lot quicker and they can issue mass comms far far quicker. So the technology part has given us a lot of leverage and, and meant that we can reduce it but also the industry has come on a long way. The skill sets of major instant managers, the understanding of what skills, capabilities, knowledge and attitudes we need, so we're hiring better. And all of these things as a collective has made it possible for us to essentially cut that in half. So we really pushed this a number of years ago and the industry and all of the people in it did a phenomenal job, an overwhelming number of people and companies now have that as their standard and are achieving it and, and doing a phenomenal job and it is not a small thing to to be able to do that major incidents are obviously fraught with emotions fraught with chaos of both information and people and resources so it's it's a real achievement for companies but what you still find is anecdotally even when i personally go out training you still get questions around how people are hitting 15 minute comms. And it appears there's, it's, there's definitely enough people, again, that it's not isolated to one or two companies, but it's never whole teams, which is interesting. It's normally individuals which are struggling to meet the initial 15 minutes. What I mean by that is you go into train I don't know, a well-known company and they've got a hundred um, staff that you're training across multiple locations, you'll find there'll be one or two in each location in, say, a team of 20 or 30 who really struggle. And it's really, really interesting that it's never the whole team and it's normally very diligent, hard-working, conscientious people. So we're going to get into this. It's really interesting. So... If we pull back for a second and forget the initial 15 minutes and we think in a more general term, in a professional setting, there's normally three reasons a person or a team member is not doing what you want them to do. And it can really help when you're looking at this to very quickly clarify a problem and actually fix it very quickly as well. So those three reasons are they don't know what you want them to do. And that can often, as managers or leaders, 
or the visionary within a team can be because we haven't clearly articulated or documented or continually reinforced what we want people to do. So it kind of gets lost. So first of all, do they fully understand this is what's expected? Second of all, they don't know how you want them to do it. Now, the how's really interesting because it gets into the specifics. If I gave all of you some kind of goal, I would like you to go and do this. If I had 100 people, I'd probably get 50 different ways of doing it. And it's not that anyone's doing anything wrong. It's we all think differently. We all have different experiences and backgrounds. We'll all solve a problem in a slightly different way. So if there's a very specific task that needs doing in a very specific way, we have to give people that level of detail of that. This is how I want this thing done. Otherwise, it's quite unfair for us to expect them to to do it to our very specific standards. So number one, they don't know what you want them to do. Number two, they don't know how you want them to do it. And number three is they are not incentivized to do it. Now, number three is interesting. Um, that can be punishment or reward in whatever form. Interestingly enough, most people are diligent professionals. And so simply reporting on whether we're hitting the initial comms, what percentage we're hitting, and sharing that with the team is often strong enough to highlight it. You can build that into people's personal development plans and their own individual targets for the year, particularly those who perhaps are struggling with it. So then it's something they and you can focus on. But um, people do need to be incentivized to do the right things and right behaviors. So my observation is actually the ones who struggle with this and normally miss the initial 15 minute updates are some of the most conscientious and diligent members of the team. And they're actually trying to do the right thing. And they're also trying or attempting to avoid a mistake. So they're usually trying to gather so much information for those initial comms that they're rock solid, that they understand every single aspect and angle of the major instance. And they want to give that knowledge and impart that information to the stakeholders. And so they're actually trying to be really, really thorough, which is, which is admirable. It's what we want in this job. It's important. Being precise is very important. So they're actually doing the right thing, but they're doing it at the wrong time. So if we were to dissect the global best practice in IT major instant management's three phases, the initial 15 minute phase, the post 15 minute phase and resolution and closure, we see that there's sub objectives in each of these. Now there's a whole video on this, so I'm not going to go into that in, in this video, but you can watch that whole video and it breaks down the three phases and the sub objectives within the process. And the reason we have that, one, for, for chunking, so it's really easy for us to look at the overall process, break it into slightly smaller chunks and identify what's going on, where there's potential challenges. But two, it's because our mindset needs to be different as the major instant manager in each of these phases, only slightly, and we never lose focus on the overall objective. But in each of those phases, it does require a slightly different mindset. And the initial 15 minute phase, one of the key sub objectives is to make stakeholders aware that there is a major instant and we have engaged the technical resolving groups. So essentially we're saying, we're on it, we've got this, you can trust us, it's in hand. That's it. And for 15 minutes, in a proper major instant, that's appropriate. By the nature of major instants, we don't often have a lot of information. So by the nature of major instants, sometimes it's great we get loads of information, really high quality information. We understand many aspects when we first take over the major instant. But equally, and probably more often than not, we don't. We might have very good 
classification capabilities and understanding what part of the infrastructure is affected. And if we're, we're very mature, we may even understand at a really concrete level how that impacts the business that we're serving, so the proper commercial and business impact. But it doesn't mean that we understand all the interdependencies or we understand everything around the health checks of that infrastructure we're not going to have all the information at the initial 15 minutes the majority of the time so because of that what we actually need to do is just make sure that all of our key stakeholders are aware that the operation has mobilized and we're aware that there is a major incident that's it now of course when we come to update comms we should know more. We've gone on a bridge call, we've brought the technical teams together, we have performed health checks, we've done a, a slightly deeper investigation, hopefully we have an action plan in place. So we will know a lot more then. But in 15 minutes, we aren't going to know a huge amount of information, and that's actually okay. So the trade-off we have to think about is, yes, you can provide a lot more information if you were to take longer, However, you will do more damage in terms of stakeholder confidence if in acquiring more information you take so long to issue comms that the stakeholders actually hear that there is a major incident from someone or somewhere else other than the major incident team. We never want that to occur. It looks like we don't have control. And if someone has to come to us and say, oh, there's a major incident we were aware, and we've been looking at it for 30 minutes or 40 minutes, it just looks like we don't have control of the situation. And of course, that is going to lead stakeholders to lose confidence for us or potentially trust in us, which we need to maintain. It's really, really important. So there is a trade-off, but it's a reasonable trade-off to have less information. Now, that doesn't mean that the comms still shouldn't be well written, have good grammar, have punctuation, um, and include all the key information that we would expect to see in there. But it, it does mean that we can, at the start of a major instance, sometimes have more generalised statements of we are aware there's a major instance affecting X, we have engaged the technical resolving groups update time so we can have those shorter ones we just need to let them know so for those of you who delay initial comms or who has a colleague who delays initial comms for the right reason because you're so diligent you're trying to acquire more information just know you don't need to and as i said you may actually inadvertently cause more issues than you solve by doing that and it is okay for you to issue that it's not a problem i understand the the diligent professional in you really wants that to be perfect but actually um, it probably will cause more problems than it solves so hopefully in this short video i've given you a new perspective and a different way of looking at this and i hope it's created some value for some of you See you next time.